now we're heading to our lab, where we're going to put our bodies to the test to show you how your body works. Ah, that really hurts. Just don't try anything you see here at home. Ow! Did that hurt? Yes, get off. OK, what about this? No, but get off, I don't like it. We all experience pain. You've got over three million pain receptors throughout your body. But some areas like this ah! have more receptors than other areas, like this. Now, I know I shouldn't be pinching these on, but it was all to explain pain receptors. Pain receptors are specialised nerve endings. They act as messengers, so when they detect something painful, they tell your brain you're hurt. Pain can be really useful sometimes because it stops you accidentally damaging your body. But why is it we feel pain differently in different situations? Sometimes you can stub your toe and be in terrible agony. Other times you cut yourself really badly playing football and you don't notice till the end of the match. And that's because pain is in your brain. And this means that you can reduce the amount of pain you experience. And we're going to show you how. But before I show you this clever trick, I'm going to inflict a little bit of pain on Zand so that we can see how a person reacts normally. Oh, good. This is a heat stimulation thermode. It's a pain machine. I'm going to put it on the back of Zahn's hand and turn up the temperature until he can't stand it anymore. And I'm going to do the same to him, and we'll see who can take more pain. It's a little bit dramatic, isn't it? This medical device is used by scientists to test people's sensitivity. The end of the rod will get increasingly hot the more I turn this dial up. It won't burn, but let's see how much heat Zahn can take by letting his body send pain signals to his brain just like normal. You ready, Zond? Yep. Ah! No, it's not on yet. Put your hand back. All right. So that's the temperature on of the probe. I'm going to start turning it up. Remember, we can only do this because we're doctors. Yeah, it gets warm. Yeah, it's warm now. Let's turn it up a bit more. I, I can definitely feel that there's a hot thing. Ah, yeah, yeah, OK. And a bit more again. Ah, 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 So that, that's really burning now. Yeah, yeah, ow, 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 ow. Ah, yeah, that's enough, that's enough, that's enough, that's enough. Okay. enough. Zand has managed to stand the pain up to a temperature of 45.2 degrees. It was definitely painful. It wasn't just you kind of wimping out. No, it was painful. It was getting more painful. And there was definitely a moment where it just suddenly was just like, oh, oh no, 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 I want to take my hand away now. That's too painful. OK, my go now. Now I'm going to try the same thing on Chris. Only I've got a trick up my sleeve. I'm going to distract my brain. And that means I should be able to take more pain than Zand. So let's see how long Chris can last. Chris, this is going to hurt you a lot more than it's going to hurt me. We'll see about that. I'm going to use a different technique, Zan. I'm going to distract myself and I'm going to really pretend that this doesn't hurt. And I reckon I can take more pain. I'm on a beach. I'm on a really sunny beach. I'm feeling really good. You're not on a beach, Chris. You're in a lab with a red hot probe sticking into your hand. It's not red hot. It's barely hot. Is it on? <laughs> How's that beach feeling now? The beach is quite hot now. <laughs> OK, OK, I'm done, 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 done. <laughs> <laughs> So let me tell you how you did. 48.2 degrees. So that beats you by three degrees. No. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So there's absolutely no way I could have gone another three degrees. Yeah, it really does work. So next time you've got to go to the doctors and have an injection, try it and see how you get on. Yes, it's a clever trick. If you think of something relaxing, you'll find it easier to cope with pain. Don't feel a thing. <laughs> Today, we're taking you on a journey down your body's information superhighway. We're talking about your nerves. Come and have a look at this. Now, where in the body do you think you'd find this lot? Is it A, inside your stomach, B, inside your leg, or C, inside your back? Well, the answer is C, it's inside your back. This is a spinal column, and it runs all the way from the bottom of your head the top of your bottom. Now, this spinal column is from a pig, but yours is very similar. The whole structure is designed to protect a very important bunch of nerves called the spinal cord, and it runs down this groove in the middle. And this is the spinal cord itself. The reason that it's so well protected inside those bones is because it's very important. It carries all the information from your brain to your muscles. And what's really amazing is some nerves carry signals at 100 metres per second. 
which is 10 times faster than anyone can run, even Usain Bolt. So how are they so fast? Well, we're going to show you. Hang on, that's the lunch bell. Woohoo! <laughs> Just a minute, Sand. It's not lunchtime yet. What's everyone doing in the canteen? Uh, Zand, what on earth is going on? It's actually part of a plan to show you how nerves work. Now, the lunch queue represents one single nerve. All the way along the nerve are iron channels. And that's what the people in this lunch queue are. They pass the message from one place to another all along the length of the nerve. OK, I see. So I represent my own brain, and I'm thirsty and I want a cup of tea, but in order to get my hand to get me a cup of tea, I have to send a message down this line, just like the brain would send a nerve signal down a nerve. So my brain is using the iron channels in my nerve to send a message to my hand for a drink. Mm, tea. OK. Uh, milk, two sugars, please. Thank you. Ooh, this tea is very hot. I'd better send a note to Chris's brain, see what he wants me to do about it. Hurry up, Iron Channels. This is really hot. Ah! Tea is too hot. Hmm. Well, Zahn's message did eventually get to me, but it took a long time, didn't it? Well, from my perspective, the tea is too hot to drink, so I'm going to go back to the lab. Come on, Iron Channels. Uh, Chris? Chris? Thankfully, your nerves have a trick up their sleeves to make them work a whole lot better than our lunch queue. And we're going to show you just what that is by using dominoes. Dominoes? Great! Now, each line of dominoes represents a single nerve. And each domino is an iron channel, just like those people in the lunch queue. Now, in this lineup, all the dominoes are side by side. But in this lineup, there are rulers between each domino. And these rulers represent something called a myelin sheath. Now, in your body, there is a myelin sheath wrapped around many of your nerves. This is what allows messages to travel down your nerves in a very special way. Both cars will go round the loop, but... Which car is going to jump first? Let's find out. It's time for a nerve race. Wearing blue in lane one, it's the rampaging ruler, the myelin sheath mover, Dr Chris! And in lane two, the green machine, the domino dominator, Dr Zahn! Drivers at the ready, three, two, one, go! Yes! Let's see that again. What a start from Dr Chris's myelin sheath as it streaks ahead of Dr Zahn's dawdling dominoes. Exactly what happens inside your body as the myelin sheath wrapped around the nerve allows the signal to go super fast and sends the blue car speeding to the finish. It's just as well, because if your nerves were like Zahn's race, you'd be the slowest moving human on the planet. Oi! So, we've shown you the amazing superhighway of nerves that is your spinal cord. And we've shown you how they pass messages around your body so quickly at 100 metres per second. And that's all thanks to a layer of fat called the myelin sheath, which allows messages to jump along the nerve, getting to their destination super fast. Right, I want to have a rematch. Fine, we can. But you have to set up the dominoes. Well, no problem at all. OK, good. Now, this time, I'm going to want the other line-up. I wonder if I can get rid of some of these blue dominoes. Oh! We've got loads of amazing body tricks to show you. Here's how to confuse your friend's brains using just water. Wow. Right, this is cool. Zand, I need a bowl full of ice cold water. And now I need a bowl full of medium temperature water. And now I need a bowl full of hot water. Hot from the tap, not from a kettle. I'm going to put this hand now in the ice cold water and this hand in the hot water. And I'm going to leave them there for one minute. And now I'm going to put both hands in the middle bowl. And that is really weird. So the hand that was in the ice water feels boiling hot, and the hand that was in the hot water feels freezing cold. I'm in a state of total neural confusion. Zand, what is going on? 
Well, for the hand that was in the cold water, the warm sensing nerves in Chris's skin became much more active and all the cold senses were shut off. This fooled the brain into thinking his cold hand was hot. And for the hand in hot water, it was the other way around. So the cold sensing nerves in my skin became more active and all the hot senses were shut off. This fooled my brain into thinking my hot hand was cold. Try it out on your friends and confuse their brains. Your body is amazing, but sometimes it needs fixing. All over the UK, there are special teams of professionals trained to tackle medical mysteries. And some of their work is life-changing. Today, I'm meeting 10-year-old Ben, who has epilepsy. Your brain is incredible. It tells your body what to do by sending electrical messages through your nerves to your muscles. Whether you're walking, blinking or picking your nose, it's these messages from the brain that control movement. But sometimes too many uncontrolled messages come from the brain to the body, creating a storm of electrical activity. And when this happens, it's called an epileptic seizure. Epilepsy is a condition that affects 60,000 children in the UK, so you might have it, or you might have a friend who does. Ben has been having seizures for nearly five months. Morning. As well as medicine, in a small number of cases, doctors can use surgery to treat epilepsy. And that's why Ben has come to Bristol Children's Hospital. So you have these seizures, now how often do you have them? Uh, two times a day sometimes. And what happens when you have a seizure, do you know? I don't know. Not sure? And why don't you know? Because you're not conscious when you have them, are you? Yeah. You don't remember them at all? No. So today is a really big day for you. Yeah. Why is it a big day? Because I'm operation. You're going to have an operation today? Yeah. Ben's incredible surgery involves removing a small part of the brain which doctors believe is causing his seizures. Ben has had MRI scans and electrodes fitted to his head to pinpoint the exact area to remove. Dr Mike Carter is carrying out today's operation. We learned that there are electrical activities coming from one particular part of the brain, and that area of the brain is the area that contains the abnormality we can see on the scan. So he's going to have an operation to remove this abnormality and hopefully cure his seizures. It's time for Ben's operation. He's had a general anaesthetic to put him to sleep so he won't feel a thing. So this black bit here, in this bit of Ben's brain, this is where those seizures are starting. And this is what Mike is going to take out today. Firstly, Ben gets a snazzy haircut in the place where the incision will be made. Then Dr Mike cuts through Ben's skin and muscle to expose the skull. Look away now if you're squeamish. So this is the bone. We're going to mark out where we're going to make some openings into it. What Mike's doing is opening a hatch. He calls it actually a trap door in the side of Ben's skull. And underneath, we're going to get to the brain. There you go. It's a bit of bone that's come out. OK, so we'll keep that, put it back in later. Another gross alert coming up. So this is the surface of Ben's brain. And about two centimetres under here is that abnormality of the blood vessels the mic is going to remove. To make sure Dr Mike gets to exactly the right part, he uses an amazing piece of technology called neuro-navigation, which guides him to precisely where the lesion is. Dr Mike begins to cut into Ben's brain. I'm just beginning to see a difference in the colour of the tissue down here. I think that's the abnormality. That's certainly where the image guidance is telling us we need to be. So the, the red, angry-looking blob it's the abnormality where we think the epilepsy is coming from. But, um, there you go. Have a look at it. Wow. So this is the lesion that Mike thinks has been causing Ben's epilepsy. And he's really hoping that now that he's taken that out, the seizures will stop. And a few weeks later, Ben is recovering well. So since the operation, how are you feeling now? I'm fine. Are you? Yeah. My head doesn't hurt. What about the seizures? I don't have any since operation. Really? Are your thoughts different? Yeah, because I couldn't really say things properly. I couldn't think what the words were supposed to be. But now I can. <laughs> so, as you can see, Ben's surgery has been a really big success. Now, not everyone needs surgery. Some people can be managed with medication. But when it is appropriate, in the right circumstances, it can be absolutely life-changing. I think that's what we're seeing here. Right, I'm going to get stuck in. Where's that ball? Here we go. Oh.
we've got some incredible body tricks for you to show your mates. Want to fool your friends into thinking they're falling through the floor? Well, we're going to show you how. So, we've got a really good trick for you. Zan, I want you to lie on the ground. <laughs> OK, you comfortable? Very comfortable. So, Zan, I want you to give me your feet. Yeah. And I'm going to make your feet feel as if they're going through the floor. No, you're not. This floor's solid. Give me your feet. These feet are this good. Can everyone else smell Zan's feet? Zan, close your eyes. And I'm going to slowly, slowly lower your feet. And it's going to feel like I've got these guys to dig a hole under your feet. They're digging holes. I can't hear any digging holes. How close do you think your feet are to the ground? Probably about 10 centimetres off the ground. 10 centimetres? More like 50 centimetres, but let's keep going. OK, they're right about to touch the ground now. No, they're not. Whoa, they're going through the floor. Whoa, whoa! His feet haven't even touched the floor yet, but Zahn thinks they're falling through it. Oh, that's really weird. They're through the floor. Time for <laughs> this lot to have a go. 10 centimetres. So why do your legs feel like they've gone through the floor when they haven't? It felt like when you was laying down, like, all the blood was, like, draining from your lower um, part of your body. So it felt like your legs were getting numb. Well, Olivia's on the right lines, but there's more to it than that. When Chris held my legs up, the nerves in my joints relaxed and stopped telling my brain where my legs were. And having my eyes closed meant that when he lowered them again, my confused brain tried to work out the position of my legs, but kept getting it wrong. And that's why it felt like they'd fallen through the floor. When it was nearly touching the floor, it felt like I was really under. Try it yourself and see if you can feel it too. <laughs> 